Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and Apple released iOS 18.7.2 to the public. iOS 18.7.2 is available around the world at the same time for everyone, as long as you're on iOS 18.7.1 or older on iOS 18 supported devices. So this will not be supported on the iPhone 17, but is supported all the way up to the iPhone 16 Pro Max. And of course, all the way back to the iPhone 10s, 10s Max and 10R. Now this particular update came in at 755 megabytes that's on the iPhone 16 Pro Max was about the same size on the other devices here and this was released alongside iPadOS 18.7.2 as well. Now the only way to install this is like I mentioned before if you're on iOS 18.7.1 or older there are no IPSW files allowing you to downgrade if you have a 16 Pro Max from iOS 26 down to this version but if you have iOS 18 or up to 18.7.1, you'll be able to install this. This could be the last time they allow this, as typically as we get further and further into iOS 26 or the next version, they'll stop allowing this other than for older devices such as the 10s, 10s Max, and 10R. Those actually have files available, but any of the phones after that do not. Now this particular update is more of a security update, but first let's take a look at the build number, then we'll talk about what's new. So we'll go into settings, then we'll go to general, then about. As you can see, the build number is 22H124, and it says this update provides important security fixes and is recommended for all users. However, there is an update within it. The first thing is there is no modem update coming from iOS 18.6, 18.7, all the way up to iOS 18.7.2. However, Apple did update Apple Intelligence in iOS 18.7.2. If we go down to Apple Intelligence in Siri, you'll see here, if we go to languages, we get all of the same languages we still get in iOS 26.1. So that means they've added things such as Chinese traditional, Chinese simplified. We also have things such as Italian. If we keep scrolling down, you'll see that we have Korean. We also have Russian. We have Swedish. Thai, Turkish, Vietnamese, and all the same languages that carried across with iOS 26.1. We also have an update in the Translate app with languages as well. So if we go into Translate here, within Translate, while we don't have the AirPods Translate option, we do have it in the languages for the Translate app. So again, Chinese Mandarin Simplified, Chinese Mandarin Traditional. If we scroll down, you'll see again Italian, you have Russian, Thai, Turkish, Ukrainian, and Vietnamese. So not everything that's in Apple Intelligence, but you do have many of the updates that we have in 26.1, or all of them as far as the Translate app, other than the live Translate with AirPods. Now, Apple hasn't mentioned anything about bugs or bug fixes. There's no release notes for this. So if we go to the public facing release note website, you'll see they haven't even updated the page. So there just might not be any here, but it doesn't mean they didn't fix something. But so far, there's no mention of it, even on the enterprise website. However, there are quite a few security updates on Apple's security release website. If we scroll down, you'll see iOS 18.7.2 and iPadOS 18.7.2. And we have all of the others with iOS 26.1 from earlier this week. But if we go into it and scroll down, there's over 25 different security updates, everything from accessibility to app store to audio camera and much, much more. And in order to read this, we'll just keep scrolling. You can see all of these here. There was an issue with Siri, for example, where the impact or issue was an app may be able to access protected user data. The description to fix it was the issue was addressed with improved redaction of sensitive information. And then you have the CVE number and the person that submitted it to Apple. So quite a few things to mention here. So if you're wondering if you should install iOS 18.7.2, so far it seems like it's a great option for that as it has a lot of security fixes, basically the same things that we have with iOS 26.1. So instead of getting any features really, other than the languages I mentioned, you typically get things such as a security update with late releases. So I would definitely recommend installing it. And that carries across to things such as performance. Well, I noticed right away, this is the iPhone 14 Pro Max. And you can see that if we go into settings, and you'll see it at the top of the display here, but this is the 14 pro max. And I noticed right away how smooth this is. So performance wise, everything seems super smooth, whether it's scrolling through ProMotion. In fact, it feels much faster than iOS 26.1 to me. I was looking at that on my iPhone air here and just scrolling from page to page, the overall responsiveness really surprised me. So on the older devices, if you haven't updated yet, it feels very, very smooth. Going to the widget page is super smooth, just opening applications 
notifications, you'll see everything is nice and fast. We'll give it a second here since I haven't opened this in a while, but in general, things seem nice and smooth. They load fast compared to maybe music here where it's fast. It's the latest phone, but even on an older phone, this update feels nice and smooth. So again, we'll give it a second to load. We'll go back here and everything is just working like you would expect. So I'm very impressed with the performance so far. Now, when it comes to battery life, I don't use this version full time, so I can't really give you an accurate measurement of that just yet, but we'll talk about that in the weekend follow-up video. For example, if we take a look at this phone, we can take a look at battery on this one. If we go to battery, this is a little bit older phone. So we're down to 87% maximum capacity and it doesn't give us the cycle count, but you can see the information here with coconut battery. But just for an example, I use this one for a year. It's still working just fine. It's nice and fast as long as we're on the older update. So maybe we'll test this out with a comparable 14 pro max on iOS 26 and see how it handles it as well. Side by side in a future video. When it comes to overall storage, let's go ahead and take a look. It shouldn't be taking up really any more, but iPhone storage, give it a second to load here, scroll to the bottom. You'll see it's taking up 18.67 gigabytes. And if we go into that, Apple intelligence is around six gigabytes, which is the same size it is on iOS 26. And then iOS is 12.39 gigabytes. So right around where we would expect. As far as when you can expect the next release, well, like I mentioned, this could be the last release they push out to the more recent phones. So typically after a few updates, Apple will stop pushing out updates to things such as the 16 Pro Max, trying to encourage people to update to iOS 26. So we may see that with the next release and it would only be available for things such as the iPhone 10s, 10s Max and 10R. So we'll have to wait and see if they do that. Hopefully they don't just to keep everyone up to date with security updates, but I'll keep you informed either way. As far as benchmarks, well, I did run it quite a few times on this device and you'll see it scored 3,487 for single core, 8,236 for multi-core. I've tried it quite a few times over the day or so, and it seems to be performing pretty well compared to previous versions. Not as good as maybe some of the previous ones with 18.7, but it's only been a couple of hours. So we need to give it a few days and see how it performs on the weekend. Also, the other thing I wanted to mention is the overall heat of the phone was quite hot when it first updated, but it's since cooled down and it's fairly cool to the touch. So no real concern there. Like I mentioned, I'm very surprised how smooth this is, especially on the 14 Pro Max. It just feels like it's a new phone with it. So no real reservations in recommending you upgrade to it. Of course, we'll have to see how it is in a few days. So that's everything with iOS 18.7.2. Many of you were asking me to make the video, so I figured I would make it just to keep you informed, but it's basically just a security update and patches to keep everything up to date and keep the phone secure. Other than that, there's not a whole lot more in it. It's fluid and fast. Everything works as expected. And again, it's more fluid than I would have expected. Let me know your experience with it in the comments below. And of course, I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. And if you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.